it. All right, starting live at five. It is time for your Tuesday, April 21st, quarantine quiet time. I thought it was Wednesday. It is not Wednesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Today is Tuesday. So, all right, Hannah Anderson, thank you for joining us. We've got a couple little eyeballs happening here. We're going to get started here in just a few minutes. I want to thank everybody again for tuning in, and uh, thanks for uh, sharing these posts and commenting on these posts. We're so grateful uh, for everyone that's uh, glad that you're being blessed by it. We know that it's a, it's a tough time, and there's not a lot of good news happening right now, but... I just want to say uh, I'm proud of, of Antioch Baptist Church. We've got uh, so many members that are doing things uh, for to, to kind of combat this virus. We've got we've got people making masks uh, around the clock. We've got uh, people that are doing that. And today we actually got a couple boxes of industrial strength hand sanitizer. Uh, the church was able to order it through our cleaning company. And so we sent a case of industrial strength hand sanitizer today to the Martha Jefferson emergency room. We're going to be sending a case to the uh, pharmacy at uh, Zion's Crossroads. We're sending a case to uh, the sheriff's office. So we're, we're that's a little extra, uh, costs a little extra, but it's an awesome outreach that we're doing right now. Uh, we're going to be doing our loaves and fishes meal again this Saturday, drive through style. So it's been great to see people still giving and finding ways to to reach out to their community. Uh, thank you uh, for doing that, and thank you for supporting the church so that we can continue to do that. I know that the nurses were really happy to get that hand sanitizer today, so it was awesome. All right, we're going to sing a song called uh, Blessed Be Your Name. I love this song. This song is kind of inspired by the life of Job, and that's what we're going to talk about for a few minutes tonight. So God is good all the time. God is good even when he's not understood. He's good no matter what, uh, when times are good, when times are bad, we have to choose to say, blessed be the name of, of the Lord. So let's open up in prayer and then let's, let's start singing. Lord, thank you for your provision and your goodness and your grace. Even when things seem like they're going wrong and sideways around us, Lord, we're thankful that you are good and that you are working behind the scenes, Lord, producing something larger uh, than, than we can know or imagine. So we just thank you. We trust you tonight. We're thankful that in the midst of all this, Lord, you are using it for your glory. You're using it to bring us closer to you and closer to each other. And so we just say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Even though uh, we're in the valley, uh, even though it's a wilderness time in our nation, uh, even though there's a lot of darkness and suffering, God, we just say, blessed be the name of the Lord. We're thankful, God, that you give and you take away. So, Lord, we, as we lift this song up to you tonight, we pray your blessing on our nation. We pray, Lord, you just turn our hearts back to you. Help us, oh God, to humble ourselves and to pray and to seek your face so that you can heal us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessed be your name, the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, found in the desert place, the walk through the wilderness.
so many songs. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Sorry about that. Sometimes the sometimes you just gotta roll with what you're feeling. Here, honey, will you put this in the case for me, please? Sweetie. Hey, I can get down with a little with a little bit of journey. Don't stop believing that God's gonna bring something good out of this situation. Because he is, because he is good. And uh looking at the at the book of Job tonight. I'm going to attempt in the next 10 minutes to go from chapter 1 all the way to chapter uh, 48, I think, is Job. Job, 48 chapters in Job, so we're going to cover them all. Now, uh, I'm just kidding. We're going to look at a few verses, but the whole idea of suffering is that I think that if we're all honest, we kind of have this depiction or this mentality that as long as we're doing the right thing, and as long as we're doing our best and trying hard to serve the Lord, um, that things should go well for us, that things should go good for us, that, that we should be blessed. And it's true, but I think we, we need to remember that following God and being obedient to the Word of God is not a guarantee that you will not experience suffering. It's not a guarantee that you won't experience pain. In fact, sometimes obeying God and serving the Lord and being faithful to the Lord is exactly what will put you in the midst of the hardest trials of your life. Sometimes following the Lord is what really uh, cranks the heat up, so to speak. Sometimes following the Lord and being obedient to His Word makes you a target for the enemy. And so, you know, opposition should be considered the greatest compliment that the devil can give any believer. Suffering should be considered the biggest compliment you can receive. If you're going through hardship, if you're going through pain, if you're going through hard times, chances are uh, you actually might be doing something right. And we see that in the story of Job. Job was a blameless man and who was upright. He feared God and he turned away from evil. He was wealthy. He was prosperous. The Bible says that he was blameless and he served God. And so what happens is, uh, God actually starts bragging about Job to Satan. And Satan says, well, the only reason uh, he, he uh, fears you is because you've put a hedge around him on every side. And if you, if you took that away from Job, he would curse you uh, to your face. And, uh, and God told Satan, he said, well, go ahead, give it your best shot. So you know what happens in Job chapter 1, one day... As he, uh, as he is just minding his own business, he gets all of these servants running to him and reporting that all of his children were killed. Uh, in, the older, in the oldest brother's house, his children were killed. His oxen and his donkeys and his sheep and all of those things were plundered and destroyed. 
and, and, and all this stuff happens to Job. It all happens all at once. And this is what it says in Job chapter 1. Immediately in, in, in one day, his entire life got turned upside down. In one day, he lost his children, he lost all of his wealth and all of his possessions. But this is what it says in Job chapter 1, verse 20. It says that after he heard this, Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, and he fell on the ground and worshipped. Here's what I've noticed and learned about suffering. Suffering will either cause you to deepen your faith, or suffering will cause you to depart from your faith. Suffering will either cause you to deepen your faith, or suffering can cause you to depart from, from the faith. But look at Job's reaction when he has this. The worst day of his life, on the, worst, on the day he gets the worst news he could ever receive, what does he do? He falls down on his face, and he worships God. Listen to what he says. Listen, listen to this perspective. He says, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. Now, I can tell you, I don't know if I would have responded like Job if all of my children uh, died on the same day, and he had seven children. I think I believe I read that right. All of his children on the same day, they all died. They were eating his sons and his daughters in his oldest son's house, and, and, and it was a, a freak accident. A wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young people, and they were dead. I just, I cannot believe that. I, I don't know how I would respond to that if that happened to me. I don't know if my initial reaction would be to fall down and worship, the, would worship, to worship God in that moment. But if you will let the hardest times draw you closer to God, then you'll learn that you can always trust God no matter what the circumstance. And that's why if you let it, if you will let it, the hardest times of your life can be some of the most fruitful and faithful times of your life, but you got to choose, like Job said, uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, that wasn't enough for Satan. Not only did he attack Job's family, and not only did he attack uh, Job's uh, possessions and his oxen, and uh, Job had 10 children. That's right, seven sons and three daughters. All of them died on the same day. He, now, that wasn't enough. So, so Satan goes back to God and says, well, if, I, if you let me touch his body, then he will curse you. God says you can't take his life, but you can touch his body. So in Job chapter 2, as if it wasn't bad enough in chapter 1, where all 10 of his children die and all of his sheep, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, uh, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, all of, all of that. He, he was the greatest man on the planet on one day, and he was the most miserable man on the planet the next day. And that wasn't enough. Satan comes at him again. You have to understand something. The enemy of your soul will not be satisfied until he has you cursing God and living in sin. That is Satan's goal for you. You know why? Because he knows what is in store. He is jealous. He is hateful. He is the father of lies. He is nothing but a liar. He can't tell the truth. And he is jealous of us because we're going to inherit what he eternally lost. And so Satan has one mission on this planet, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Satan brought that against Job. God didn't bring that against Job. Satan brought it against Job. God allowed it, but God allowed it only because he knew that he was going to use Job to, to tell a bigger lesson. Are you willing to be God's object lesson? When you declare Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, are you prepared to allow him to use whatever he chooses to allow to use in your life to bring glory to his name? I hope that as we grow, we can say, blessed be the name of the Lord, no matter what. Look at chapter 2. It says that Satan attacks his, his body. Satan goes out of the presence of the Lord in chapter 2, verse 7, and he strikes Job with loathsome sores from the sole of his foot to the top of his head. And so that Job took a piece of broken pottery with which to scrape himself while he sat in ashes. Not only is Job grieving the loss of his ten children and all his possessions, now he's got loathsome sores all over his body. His wife says to him, do you still hold on to your integrity? Curse God and die. But Job said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women should speak. Don't say that to your wife wife, guys. Don't say that. But Job said it. He said, you speak like a foolish woman. Shall we receive good from God and not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Job knew God was good, even though his circumstances weren't good. 
Job knew there had to be a bigger purpose behind it. And even when he, ha- even when he was told, curse God and die, Job said, no, we, we can't expect life to always go our way. We can't expect, expect only good. Jesus said it this way, it rains on the just and on the unjust. And it's, it's the result of being in a sinful fallen world, and it's the result of being under attack from Satan and all of his minions. That's why bad things happen in the world. That's why there's sickness and disease, because there's sin and there's Satan in the world. And sometimes, you know what? The best of us get affected. Sometimes, even the ones who are the most faithful. Job was the most faithful person living on the earth in this time. And he received one of the worst set of circumstances that anybody could receive. We all know good, good people who are going through some really hard times, bad times right now. And it doesn't seem fair. It's not fair. These are two rules about life that you've got to learn. You have to learn to love God and trust God even though life is hard and life isn't fair. It's not a pass to a rainbow only. Life isn't Skittles and peanut butter jelly sandwiches all the time. Life is hard and life isn't fair. But in the midst of that, we serve a good God, a conquering God, who's going to allow, he's going to take even the worst circumstances. The miracle in following God isn't that he prevents suffering and prevents pain. The miracle of following God is that in the middle of suffering and in the middle of pain, God takes what the enemy meant for evil and he uses it for our good. He takes what was meant to destroy our faith and he uses it to strengthen our faith. And that's what you have. You have to be like Job. You have to learn to fall on your knees and worship. Pray hardest when it's hardest to pray. Work hardest when it's hardest to work. Serve hardest when it's hardest to serve. It's like that old saying, when the going gets tough, that's when the tough have got to get going and we have to learn to proclaim the goodness of God and we have to say blessed be your name no matter what God blessed be your name and I love what he says here in chapter 13 Job chapter 13 he says this even though he slays me even though he slays me I will hope in him I will argue my ways to his face this will be my salvation that the godless shall not come before him. Keep listening to my words and let my declaration be in your ears. Behold, I have prepared my case. I know that I shall be in the right. And Job held on to that. He said, even though God may kill me, he said, I may die from this, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hope in him. This is going to be my salvation. Job knew that somehow this is going to turn out for my good and for God's glory. And then we all know what happens Uh, Job's three friends uh, give him a hard time over the next 30-some chapters. They give him a hard time over and over and over again. And in chapter uh, 40 and 41, the Lord shows up and answers Job. The Lord finally shows up, and I love what God says to Job. He says, Job, where were you? Where were you when, when, uh, where were you when, 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 Le- when Leviathan was made? He says this in chapter 41. Can you draw Leviathan out with a fish hook? Can you press down his tongue with a cord? Can you put a rope in his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? He's like, Job basically gets rebuked by God. God says, look, where were you when I built, when I laid the foundations of the earth? Can you take the biggest, baddest creature on the planet and lead it around by the nose? No, you can't. God shows up and he reminds Job that he's God. He doesn't, he doesn't uh, owe anybody an explanation. God doesn't owe any of us an explanation. He's God. He does what he does. He's God. He's the creator. We're the created. We've got to trust him. We've got to have that unwavering faith. We've got to say, Lord, no matter what happens, my heart will choose to say, blessed be your name. Because here's the truth. You can't control your circumstances. Only thing you have any control over is how you respond to your circumstances. So are you going to get bitter and angry and jaded? Or are you going to say, Lord, blessed be your name? You have to choose. My heart will choose. You have a choice in the matter. How do you respond? Because it's either going to deepen your faith or it's going to cause you to depart from your faith. And just like Job said, even though you kill me, I'm going to praise your name. If you will allow it, those circumstances that the enemy brings into your life, make no mistake about it, it's coming, it's an attack from the enemy. When you're living and following the word of God and opposition comes, it's an attack from the enemy. When it comes, you can can let God 
prove himself to be faithful. And if you will let those situations, if you will let God work in those hardest times, if we let God work in the middle of the pandemic and in the middle of the epidemic and in the middle of the panic, if we will allow God to work in our lives, what we'll see is you're going to see a people come out of this with a stronger faith, with more motivation to give, with better motivation to serve, and with a heart that says, God, we know that you're good and we're going to serve you with all that we have, no matter what happens. Even if, even if you kill me, I'm going to praise your name. I love it. I just love Job's mentality. And his circumstances were harder than anything I've ever gone through. Uh, I, there, he, he experienced more pain, more suffering than, than I've ever experienced. But in, even in the midst of all that, even in the midst of all that, God showed up and God was faithful. God actually rebuked Job's friends in chapter 42. And he told Job's friends, the ones that had been convinced that Job had done something wrong. See, when things go wrong in your life, there's always going to be those people that sit back and are, 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 are always they're playing Monday morning quarterback with your life. Forget those people. They're, Job's friends were sitting there. What did you do wrong? What did you do wrong? Why did you do? Well, how did you sin? Why? These things are happening to you because something, because of some sin that you committed. And the fact is, is everything was happening to Job because he was righteous and faithful and the enemy was trying to kill him and destroy his faith. He didn't let it happen. You know what happens in chapter 42? God tells Job's friends that they have to have Job pray for them. And after Job prays for them, God will forgive them. See, that's what happens when you hold on through the hardship. All those pointing fingers, all those laughing tongues, all those sneering folks, uh, it, the God's going to prove himself and God's going to establish you and restore you. And we know that, uh, I love verse 12. It says that, And the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. If you hang in there and you allow God to work, he can bring something good out of it. If you will let him, you've got to trust him. You've got to have that determination. You have to say, Lord, no matter what happens, I'm going to trust you. And yes, God blessed the latter half of Job's life. Uh, that didn't take away from anything Job had lost. So the blessing of God, still, uh, there still will be pain and grief from the past, but it doesn't have to define you and it doesn't have to stop you. If you allow it to propel you, God can bring you into a deeper place of intimacy. I love what Warren Wearsby said when he was counseling a woman who lost her son and her husband in the same month, both of them passed away. She said, Pastor, I don't know what God is trying to teach me here. I don't know why he let me come into the storm, but just pray that I don't waste it. Let the hardship, let the suffering, let the opposition draw you closer to the Heavenly Father. We need to, we need to do what C.H. Spurgeon said, Lord, teach me to kiss the wave. That throws me into the rock of ages. Jesus is the rock. He's the fortress. He's the, he's, the, he's the sure help in times of need and time of trouble. Don't curse God. Don't blame God. Don't throw a pity party. Serve God. Seek God. Press in. Be faithful. Remain steadfast and strong. And it will pass. The situ you will experience a breakthrough if you hold fast to the promises of of God. You have to you have to only you can choose. Are you going to are you going to hang on and experience a breakthrough or are you going to give up and experience a breakdown? That choice is yours. The situation may be horrible. It's probably not fair and it's probably hard. That's life. Are you going to allow God to work? Are you going to trust him in the unseen? Are you going to trust him in the crucible and the fire of life? If you do, Instead of having a breakdown, you'll experience a breakthrough. I pray that no matter what, no matter how hard it is right now, I pray that you'll have that heart of Job. I, I pray that you'll have that heart. Lord, I'm, I'm going to receive whatever you bring. Good, bad, happy, sad, whatever it is. Rain or su sunshine or rain. Lord, I'm going to trust in your goodness. I'm going to say, blessed be the name of the Lord. And even if you kill me, I'm going to hope in you. Even if you kill me, I know you'll resurrect me. It's that tight of determined, relentless faith that gets past the trial. And that's what you got to do. Hang in there. Hold on. Don't give up. God is good. Even when he's not understood, trust in him and hope in his name. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you that in our hardest times, Lord, you don't leave us. Lord, you carry us. I love that old poem, the footprints in the sand. 
Lord, it may, we may see one set of footprints in, in, our, in our path right now. Help us to remember that that's you carrying us. You haven't abandoned us. You said you'd never leave us or forsake us. Lord, if, we, if we're being faithful, if we're serving, if we're obeying, Lord, and, and, and opposition comes, Lord, help us to take it as a compliment from the enemy. Uh, help us to take it as motivation to, to, to pray harder, to praise harder, to worship more. Lord, help us, oh God, to, to have that determined heart that you're good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, we want to say blessed be your name. When the sun's shining down, when the world is all as it should be, we say blessed be your name. When we walk through the wilderness and when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we say blessed be your name. Help us to learn, O oh God, that we can always trust you. Uh, help us to trust you with the hurt and with the, with the pain so that we can experience the healing and the power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. God bless you. Hang in there. Don't give up. It's going to be all right. We're going to get through it. God bless you. See you later.